Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at and considering today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we will be considering today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You, you need to read along with me because sometimes I skip a groove. Okay, sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain and the brain quicker than the mouth. Okay, you, you got, you got, you know, you got to keep an eye on me. Keep an eye, you keep an eye on me, okay? Go ahead, come on, please. Please, and you know, if I miss, make a misstep or say something out of line, meaning, you know, like I misquote or something, I get corrected. That, you know, so read along with me, okay? Read along with me. In the authorized version of the scriptures, turn to Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Let's read to begin. Verses 16 on to verse 23. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Now think about that really quickly. Think about these Joel Osteen's, the, the um, Kenneth Doplins and the uh, name it and claim it, uh, nab it and blab it crowd, okay, the Pentecostals generally, okay, very similar to the fake grace sleazy believers because their, their faith is in their faith because they think they're gods and whatnot, okay, you know, poor people giving to rich people, okay, but also in context, to you poor Catholics who are been warped in your brains, who are brainwashed to give onto the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? All right? Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. Wise, wisdom, equated with the fear of the Lord. Knowledge is the result of wisdom. What wisdom? The fear of the Lord or the wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish? The fear of man. Huh? For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I... Written, authorized version of the scriptures. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. See, right there, right there, we are to be in the scriptures and be armed with a sword when you're outside, okay? When you step out your door. I don't care if you're going to get the mail. I don't care if you're going out to take out the trash. Have the sword on you, okay? Because you never know, all right? We're supposed to be versed in the scriptures. This, through the authorized version, is how we answer, okay? We're supposed to. Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate, which Roman Catholicism does. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoiled them. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. <laughs> Verses 1 on to verse 8. 
And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You know, like that little bird of the Trinity? Huh? By the way, okay, you, you heretics, uh, this is describing the fall of Roman Catholicism. Revelation chapter 17 is perfectly describing Rome, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church, okay? Revelation 18 is the destruction, is the destruction thereof, of Roman Catholicism, okay? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicates, delicacies. Kind of like the American income taxes and taxes here. They go to Rome. I wish I had written documentation to prove that. I wish I did. If, if anybody can provide any help, any of y'all, even you, my enemies who work for the Vatican, <laughs> you can provide any information that will categorical, categorically prove that the taxes from America go into the pockets of the Vatican. Please. But anyway. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her, her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself. Oh, and you see this. You see this with these devils, Rome. Okay, don't worry, we'll be getting to this here a little later. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said, Queen, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. <laughs> Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death, and mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. That, that's, you Catholics, that's, that's the end of your religion. That's the end of Satan's church. Now, the, the man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, will be dealt with in Revelation chapter 19 and stuff like that, you know. But remember, <laughs> the book of Revelation isn't chronological. <laughs> whatever, whatever, okay? But uh, see, that, that's the end of Rome. That's the end of Rome. That's the end of Roman Catholicism. Got a while yet to go, but see, the destruction of your religion... Catholic is given right there. You're on a sinking ship, Catholic. You're on a sinking ship. And see, Rome is the Vatican, is the wealthiest nation on the earth today. Absolutely. Far more wealthier than the House of Saud. Okay, far more wealthier than anybody on this earth. Okay, uh, in the community section, dear brother gave that, uh, that video, that link thing for the wealth of the Vatican. The wealth of the Vatican is beyond whatever. I mean, it really is. Arturo Sosa 
owns countries. Okay? Because Arturo Sosa, the black pope, he is the head of Catholicism. He's the head of the Je Jesuit order. And the Jesuit order today especially is Catholicism. Okay? Arturo Sosa, the, the deadliest man on earth. The deadliest man on earth, Arturo Sosa. Okay? All right? But the wealth of the Vatican is astronomical. They're all about money. And if you read or listen to the Sacrita Monita about how the Jesuit order would uh, go about to gain this wealth uh, by get, taking advantage of widows and stuff like that, Okay, that will be in the description box for you. Okay, uh, the uh, Secreto Monita audio book, which, you know, I read. Uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, he also uh, read the Secreto Monita. You can find that on his channel as well. Okay, but you got to remember, Satan's church is all about the sin suit. It's all about flesh. It's all about the... Outward appearance, okay? That's why when you see these coadjutors, you see these heretics, these infiltrators, they're all about the visual stimuli, okay? They're all about the visual stimuli. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And we're going to be looking at this today. Okay? We're going to be looking at this. This was, um, you know, I live in a, we live in an apartment. And there were people who lived here before we did. Uh, we've gotten mail for Hispanic couples and uh, the couple to whoever this was. This is from the Rockford Diocese. Okay? The Rockford Diocese. Okay? And, uh, you know... Uh, her colors are purple and scarlet. Here's this scumbag devil, Most Reverend David J. Malloy, Bishop of Rockford. Look at that. Okay. And her colors are purple and scarlet. <coughs> scumbag. Okay. But, see, unto Rome, they're, they're the wealthiest nation. The Vatican is the wealthiest nation on earth. And the Catholic Church is. You, you got the statistic in America that the moron church, at least in America, is at least on paper the most wealthiest. And there was a link. Hey, brother, you remember that link you sent me about uh, the, or the picture? Could you provide the link for that in the, in the comment section, please? I'll pin it. Okay. Uh, in America, apparently the wealthiest church is um, the moron church, the Mormons. But see, there again, the wealth of the Vatican is without measure. So in reality, and of course, the moron church is, uh, you know, was started by the Freemason uh, Smith and whatnot like that. Okay, <laughs> whatever. But um, still, the Vatican. The, Va the Vatican, the Federal Reserve, is the Pope's personal bank. Okay? So, Rome is the wealthiest of all. Okay? All right? And to Rome, Matthew chapter 6, and see, this is what we're going to touch on today. Okay? Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 on verse 4. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. That, that wicked devil, uh, Mark the Messenger, he was, and I saw this with that, 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 that crazy satanic devil, Tom, okay, where they glorify people for giving money to them, okay? It's like, hey, you give me money, I'll give you a shot. Uh, 
Okay? That, you know, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay? All right? This aspect applies for today as far as when you go to help for the necessity of the saints. Okay? That does that is applicable. Because hey, if you're like, I gave a hundred dollars to so and so's ministry, uh, you have your reward, Jack. Okay. Mark the messenger. Okay, and if I remember I'll I'll write that down. Okay. That was one of the things, okay, mark the mess. Okay. He was sounding the trumpet. He was glowing, you know, guys giving him money. It's like, hey, 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 look at this guy. He gave me this. You have your reward. You have your reward. Okay? But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. I remember. Alms, you know, it isn't always do re mi. We immediately think of do re mi, but it's like, you know, there are other ways. But the point is, this is why the thing about tithing, these guys who will give, but yet they keep track of it so they can get their money back on their tax returns. Verily, I say unto you, you have your reward. Okay? You have your reward. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 4. Luke chapter 21, verses uh, 1 on to verse 4. And he looked up. And saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, Of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had. And see, these guys that the Lord rebuked right there in verse 3, okay, you know, by how they put in of their abundance, they're, they're shy, look at how much, look at me, look at me, look at what I've given. Okay? Mark the messenger does this, sounds a trumpet, okay, that crazy ain't guy, that idiot Tom, okay, and his two caco demon little girls that he rides with or whatever, he does the same thing. I've seen the Shemites, now remember that it's these, these Shemites, this one Japanese channel that I was looking at, uh, they're, not, they're not saints, but you know, again, they're the same principle. It's like, hey, praising people, because you that's tacky. Isn't it? It's like, that's tacky. Just, just, you know, it's like, you know, dude. <laughs> dude. I mean, I mean, if someone helps you, it's like, thank you. But, you know, you don't broadcast it. Why? Because then you have your reward. And see, if you need to get credence from other men for what you have done, like a broadcast, are you doing it from the proper perspective? Or are you doing it for self-glorification? 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you from the whore herself the grotesque nature of this. Okay? And the covetousness and the wantonness of it. Okay? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 10. Perverse Disputing, disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness. Now, we think of gain right away as money, but it's a little bit deeper than that. Popularity, subscribers, 
by their their merchandise. You call yourself a saint and you're selling t-shirts. Okay, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's glorifying the scriptures, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're a saint. And you're selling t-shirts. Mm. Yeah. 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 Bravo, buddy. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you, Bar. Thanks. That, 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 that kind. Of, next thing you know, they're going to be selling coffee cups or little grocery bags. Christian. Anyway. But godliness with contentment is great gain. <laughs> For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish, fool has said in his heart there is no God, to behave foolishly is to behave, act as if you say in your heart there is no God except the God who is yourself. Foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The other day I actually watched a, the video from Mr. Sunk and I, you know, not watched, I listened. Uh, I listened, uh, you know, I, d I did, I did. And of course he was doing what he was supposed to do and uh, he brought up some pretty good points. Brad, you listen to that? The guy, you know, like I said, uh, he's my enemy. And I'm his. But, um, you know, at least he's engaging. And besides, you know, I, I sat and had to listen to uh, that Eric Lionheart. Okay, I've listened to that idiot Tom. Okay, I, I, I mean, I would rather, if I, you know, if I had to choose between these guys, I would rather listen to Mr. Sunken Eye. Okay, but anyway, anyway, for the love of money is the root of, of all evil. Rome. Oh, you know, you look at her, you know, the gold and the, the theater and the pageantry. Okay? Look at it. Okay? For uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1. Where are you going, Frank? <laughs> Excuse me. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken. I'm reading chapter 3. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles, and the Lord our Savior. Knowing this, First, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. I was reading the wrong thing, but it fits. Chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves switch, swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 
and through, there's that word again, covetousness, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. You know, there, there was an individual who, in a very tactful way, tactful, not tactful, you know, like he, 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 was, he was being very shrewd about it. He purposely came out with something justifying paganism, you know, and getting people to rally behind him, okay? And then shortly thereafter, because he, you know, he, he, he justified sin. He justified yoking up with Rome. Okay? And then right after, he put a book out. And, he, and, and you know, God handed it to the guy. That was good business sense. You know, you, you, you know, the customers. But see, the thing is, the way it was being done. And yes, I am accusing you. The way it was done, you got to hand it to the guy. It was brilliant. Okay? It was brilliant. At the time then, came out with this thing justifying paganism and saying, hey, it was okay. A little don't hurt. And then shortly thereafter, a book came out. And like I said, hey, you got to hand it to the guy. That was good business sense. Okay? Hey, 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 hey. The book itself, whatever, you know, uh, praise the Lord. You, you got the main book that talks about it, but, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, okay? But there again, that was very subtle. That was very shrewd. That was good business. Okay, hey, there are those of you who know what I'm talking about, and we're, we're just going to leave it there. But like I said, came out ingratiating uh, himself unto the good graces of the people at a special time of the year where people are feeling already like, hey, let's, let's, let's show the love, right? And then shortly thereafter, hey, hey, that, hey here, buy, buy this. Okay, hey, I'm not going to fault that because like I said, that, that's good business sense. But there again, made merchandise of you. Hey, 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 hey. People got to make a living, right? So, the, just job, huh? This is just job, huh? You know... We are ministers of reconciliation. And if you are under this mindset that you're going to take some time away from being a minister of reconciliation, you, you need to do some self-examination. Okay? All right? You don't get a day off. You don't get a day off from being a minister of reconciliation. Okay? You don't. And we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. You, there's, there's no days off of that. You, when you're sleeping, you're sick or you're dead. Okay? Oh, sure, there's time for rest. Absolutely. I'm not saying that. But, you know, as if... As if it's an accoutrement that you could put it here and have yourself here. What the, 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 am I the only one that sees? Am I the only one that has a problem with that? Anyway. Anyway. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Now, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 21. Okay? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. 
we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, that's a reference unto. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Rome. The masters of private interpretation. A lot of these Christians, it's like, well, that's an advanced course. If you want to know more, you got to pay more. You got to pay to play. Okay? Oh, that's a that's its own separate DVD. That's another commentary set that you got to buy in order to get it. I'm not going to let you have it for right now. You got to buy. You got to pay to get that knowledge. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men by, of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And see, a lot of people, Psalm 10, a lot of people, a lot of self-theists, rightly attack Christianity and Christians because, now look, we're going to look at this, okay? All right? There is nothing wrong, okay? There is nothing wrong with you know, if you're in a calling like this, uh, saints provide for your need. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Scripture gives credence for that. Absolutely. Amen. 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 It does. We're going to look at it. Okay? We're going to look at it. But see, I asked the Lord. I asked the Lord, <laughs> Lord, okay? I asked the Lord. And the Lord responds through the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? That's scriptural. But when you start doing Psalm 10, verses 1 on to verse 4, then you have a problem. When you have a building... And you're, you know, the pay-to-play and the, the, the girls standing up there like, oh, looking all reverent as they pass the offering, play it around, okay? And you can't, Kent Helvin, by the way, oh, dude, everything that guy was doing. It's like, if, you, if this has been a blessing, please give, please give, okay? Now, scripturally, there is, in and of itself, nothing wrong with that. There is. We're going to look at it. But see, Kent Helvin, number one, he's a Jesuit. He works for the Vatican. But everything he's doing, everything, everything, it's please give, please give, please give. You go to a church building, right? You know, they have the melodic music, okay? So to touch your sentiment, to give, okay? And there's nothing wrong with giving. There is nothing wrong with giving. But see, the way it is being implemented, that's the difference. That's the difference. Why stand, uh, Psalm 10, verses 1 and verse 4. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor, like the Jesuit ordered. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhorreth is extreme hatred. Okay? The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Now, before we get to 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians 9, it's very interesting. 1 and 2 Corinthians 9 deal with the same, virtually the same subject matter. Okay? Very interesting. Very interesting. But I want to go over this now. Okay? Like I said, this, this was for a former tenant that lived here in this building, okay? This is, comes from the Diocese of Rockford. 
And, um, oh, I, I can't show this part of it. Oh, I already did. Oh, to whom it was. Oh. oh sorry. Sorry. They probably won't see this anyway. But um, this is all about... Here, let me... I, I didn't even see that. Okay. Okay. This, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Okay. Look at this. And here on the back of this, look at that. Oh, and he's so pretty. And he's so pretty. Huh? And this is a begathon kind of thing. Key areas 15% forming and supporting clergy, 62% pro proclaiming the gospel and passing on the faith, 23% caring for the poor and vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Claiming the gospel. And, and, and this thing here, and this is something that, I, that I, I've talked about. You see, our joy comes from living a life in service of others. Jesus called us to follow him, and as we respond to this call, our joy will be never ending. Giulietta Jacobo, Catholic Education Office. The Hispanic Catholic. Okay? You have Irish Catholic. You have German Catholic, the Lutherans. Okay? All right? The Hispanic Catholic. There are a lot of them around. Um, that is, I personally believe, the sleeper cell that Satan and the Jesuit order is going to use to promulgate more of Mystery Babylon. I, I truly believe that. I truly, because I haven't encountered um, Hispanic Catholics that were just like, whoa, okay, okay, all right, but, and here this, create a lasting legacy, here, here's this, and, and see, and see, see, asking for money, Roman Catholicism is the richest uh, country on earth. It is the most, they're, they're so wealthy that the measure of their wealth isn't even counted. Okay? And like we read in Proverbs 22, those who give unto the rich will come to, what, what, what was it? What was it? Let's get it correct. In Proverbs 22. Okay? Let's get it right. In verse 16. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches. Okay? And he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. See that? And see, oh, hey, hey, here's the, where do you think these uh, Christian church buildings get this from? Hmm? When you remember the Diocese of Rockford, in your, in your estate plan, or will, oh, people, listen to the Sacrita Monita, the link will be, it's me reading it, okay? Uh, if you want more clear and a lot more pronounced, pronounced uh, listen to Brother Alexander's uh, when he read it, okay? Listen to the Sacrita Monita about how the Jesuits would manipulate and connive and get people to bequeath their wills onto the Roman Catholic Church. That's part of the Sacrita Monita. That's the modus operandi of the Jesuit order. Okay? Listen to that. When you remember... This, this is Jesuit. This is Jesuit. This is virtually out of the Secreta Monita. When you remember the Diocese of Rockford, in your estate plan or will, you provide for the cultivation of our faith for years to come. Through a planned gift, you can make a lasting impact on your parish, school, or the diocese itself. Hmm. Yeah, and then it says more, a legacy, a legacy, okay? Now, now here, here's, here's the disgusting part. Here's what's the, you know, here's why we looked at Matthew chapter 6. Okay? Check this out. Get, get, look at this, okay? Look at this. Talk about sounding a trumpet before you. 
Look at this. Okay, see that? See that? Leadership gifts gift societies. We offer gift societies to recognize and celebrate those who sustain our ministries and programs through gifts to annual diocese to the annual diocese of Rockford appeal. These gifts are received with deep gratitude, make a profound difference, and are gratefully recognized. Now, see, you Catholics, okay, all right, uh, uh, you, you guys are so deluded, you, you, because just like um, Ignas, Ignatius de Loyola himself said, okay, um, if the hierarchical, hierarchical church, forgive my pronunciation, tells you that the white that you are seeing is black, you're going to believe it. You're under mind control. You're brain worst. Okay? Okay, this right here, that statement alone, that statement alone, dear, dear, deluded, deceived, and warped in your brain, Catholic. Matthew chapter 6, again. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. I, you know, I'll mark the messenger did, did, uh, did that. Uh, that idiot Tom did that. Others do that. Okay? The Catholic. Okay, McFly. This is in clear contradiction of the scripture. Clear. Okay? Jimmy Durante could see this. Ray Charles could see this. But... Like Ignatius de Loyola himself said, or Ignatius, whatever. If Rome tells you that the white you're looking at is black, you're going to believe it. Without question. But see, see th this? And see, this, we're, and I'm going to read this to you, the back part of this. You guys are not going to believe it. <laughs> okay? And again, again, the uh, Sullivangelists, you know, the uh, Kenneth Doplins, the, the Bakers, and whatever. They ask you for money, okay, with the context of your covetousness that as you, the more you give, the more God is obligated to bless you. And then they go to Malachi to justify it. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. We'll touch on that a little later, okay? But again, Catholic this is contrary to this. But when thou doest thine alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Okay? Now, hold on to your hats. Okay, now here. Here, okay? Get a load of this. Okay, let me... Okay, can you see that? Excuse me. You see that? The Society of Jesus. This this is disgusting. Society of St. Therese, Teresa of Calcutta. Understanding that our creation was an act of love by our Heavenly Father, St. Mother Teresa knew that she was called to respond lovingly to it. What does it cost to get into this club? Members only club. Okay? Gifts of 500 bucks to $999. Okay? Hey! 
You want to be part of the society of Mother Teresa? Between 500 and 999, a thousand bucks. And what happens when you turn 999 upside down? And see, what happens? You probably get a badge, and what happens? I, I give to the church. I'm part of clear contradiction in Scripture. Clear as day. Oh, we ain't done yet. Society of St. James. As the leader of the church in Jerusalem, following the resurrection, St. James was committed to the young community of faith and that returned to him one that returned him to Christ through martyrdom. How much does it cost to be part of this one? $1,000 to $1,499. You can become part of the Society of St. James. And sound a trumpet before you. I am part of the Society of St. James because I gave. The Society of St. Stephen called because of his holiness and commitment to the charitable legacy of Christ's public ministry St. Stephen was selected by the leadership of the early church to provide for and preach the gospel to those who were most in need. St. Stephen is honored as the first martyr of our faith <laughs> a Catholic. Your faith ain't the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. And, and you guys don't like to acknowledge this, but this is fact, especially today. The faith of Catholicism is Christianity! And you're Christian. I rest my case. How much does it cost to be part of this one, huh? <laughs> Wow. Fifteen hundred dollars start to two thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars you can become uh, get get your membership now two thousand four hundred and ninety nine bucks Society of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the, the Guadalupe thing is Fatima, where the devil appeared, or the devils, you know, gave the apparition of uh, Mary. Okay? I believe. I could be mistaken about that, and I don't care. <laughs> this one, you're going to like this one. <laughs> Our Lady of Guadalupe is seen as a source of spiritual comfort, a model of purity of spirit and obedience of will, a model of faith. Guess how, just guess, as you're sitting there. Guess how much it costs to become part of this society? 2,500 bucks on two. 4,000 nine hundred and ninety nine dollars wow that's quite a leap huh <laughs> think about this with these people on tv sow your seed reap a harvest you know stay, you know start at a thousand and upward the more you give the more god's obli where do you think they get this from I'm not saying that other, like, you know, people are part of this. But see, they can run into the trap of being similar. And that's what you got to watch out for. Okay? Society of St. Michael. Wow. <laughs> 
St. Michael serves as prince of the heavenly angels who are continually in the presence of God. St. Michael submitted to God in perfect obedience and now serves as protector of the church. Chapter and verse. Now, that, you know what? That might be in the Apocrypha because within the Apocrypha is where you find Catholic doctrine, especially in the book of Sirach and in Maccabees, okay? But um, a protector of the church, that, of course, they're making reference on to, uh, you know, Michael, our prince, and what, what not like that. Um, okay, that's, that's what they're making reference on to. Of course, taking that out of context. Of course. Of course. Yeah. But um, the church today is the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. The Lord himself keeps us. Okay? Just saying. Okay? Like I said, they're, they're, they're twisting Daniel. Go figure. Okay? Guess how much? Just guess. Just guess how much it costs to become part of this society. Hmm? Just guess. Five grand to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Oh, I wait. Okay. <laughs> Pope Peter. Society of Saint Peter. Peter was never a pope. Saint Peter was the first disciple to recognize Jesus and was the rock upon which our church was built. His life as a model disciple is an example for all. And to start to be part of St. Peter, Society of St. Peter, gifts start at 10 grand. For the love of money is the root of all evil which some have coveted after, that have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Unbelievable. And as we read in Proverbs 22, verse 16, you give unto the rich. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. All right? As a saint, there is such a thing that we as saints are to live of the gospel. Not off the gospel. Of the gospel. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 Verses 1, I have written down here on the verse 5, but let's read on to, oh, oh, let's read on to verse 14. Why not? Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. Feed the flock of God that is among you. Okay, like Peter says, not for filthy lucre, but by a ready heart, willingly. Okay, not not just to get make a living. Okay? Alright? And see, they go to the Jesuit cemetery schools. They get the piece of paper on their wall so they can go and do this for a living and it becomes their career. They're driven by mammon. They're driven by covetousness. Not driven by wanting to see Christ glorified. Mine answer... Wait, wait. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. 
for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. This is undisputable. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Okay? We do need to put something in this body. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, saints, you know, can get married. Unlike what Rome tells you to be, the priests need to be celibate. Okay? And I remember stupid at uh, Christy Burke. Um, brought up that thing about how Paul's like, oh, I don't want to be... No, 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 no. She's stupid. Christy Park, stupid head. She's stupid. Okay, that will be in the description box for you, okay? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Kephas? You know, Peter? Or I only and Barnabas... Have not we power to forbear working? You read in the book of Acts. It wasn't meet for the apostles to uh, get away from the, uh, the ministry of the gospel or whatever to serve tables. What were they called to do? To preach the gospel and live of the gospel. Okay? There, there, there's nothing unscriptural about that. I mean, there isn't. But see, it's taken advantage of. I mean, like I said, I mean, these these people, you know, in order to do that in a building, a phallus house that is uh, stems from Rome, um, you got to have the credentials, okay? And you got to go through all this, so you can, you know. And, but, you know, People who are in a position such as this. People who will distribute to the necessity of the saints. D d hey, Doug, it's right there, okay? It's right there. Okay? It's right there. Who goeth the warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock, and eateth not the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen, or saith he it altogether for our sakes? You remember the Levites. They had no inheritance. The Lord was their inheritance. And the offerings that were given were to go to the Levites for their sustenance. Okay? This concept crosses this dispensational lines. Okay? But when you got people holding, you know, begathons and every other thing they do, please give, please give. Like Ken Helvin, all the time, please give, please give. And he's a Jesuit. That's when you run into the problem. Okay? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should ploweth in hope, and Jesus Christ is our hope. And he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Carnal, fleshly, you know, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, now see, Paul chose not to. That's the thing that a lot of the heretics like to avoid. Paul, Paul had every right. Of course. But he chose not to. It is not wrong if a saint was called to do this. Okay? It is not wrong. It is not wrong to reap the carnal things if fellow saints so offer. There's nothing. Just read it, dude. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But if you're going to rub it into people's face, if you got to constantly, constantly, constantly and go above your means and use manipulation tactics and lie and take things out of context, Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Now, Paul there says, makes mention of hindering. Okay? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Why? Because there were those who certainly, I'm sure at this time, would take advantage of him. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? Making a reference about the Levites again. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Not off the gospel. Of the gospel. Okay? Verse 50. But I have used none of these things. He chose not to. He chose not to. He had every right. We, 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 dude, we, dude, dude, it's right here. It's right here. Okay? It's right there. But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that it should be done so. Thus, be so done unto me, for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay? Not Galatians. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <laughs> we, might, we might as well read this whole thing. For as touching the ministry of the saints... It is superfluous for me, to, or superfluous, or whatever you want to say. I'll be corrected on that later. I will. It is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the frowardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain. In this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Not that look at how much they give. Look at their charity. Look at, at their sacrifice, their self-sacrifice. Look at how much they actually care about the body of Christ. Not, they weren't boasting in the fact, hey, look at how much brother so-and-so. No! It's like, wow. These guys actually love. Love. True love. Okay? Not seeking to get again. Okay? Less happily, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, ye is plural, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter as a matter of bounty, and not as of covetousness. I'm given so I can get back. I'm given so I hey I give ten bucks that uh, you know depending on who you listen to, uh, God's going to reward more reward me a hundred bucks. See, if you are giving out of covetousness of what's going to accrue to you, you're giving for the wrong reasons. I know brethren, beautiful brethren, who give out of the right reason, out of love, out of uh, wanting to provide for the necessity of the saints. Okay? That is why you are to give. Not of covetousness. Like we saw of the Pharisees. Verily they, hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look at me. I give to Satan's church 
and I could be one of these. Or get my name mentioned on a live stream. But this I say, and see, the people in the buildings will quote this, but they don't read the whole thing. And they avoid the covetousness because they'll say, well, God loves the cheerful giver. What are the church buildings saying when they say that to you? They're saying give cheerfully because they base it off of your covetousness, people. It's like, covet. Yes, covet. Give cheerfully because, hey, the more you give, the more God's obligated to give you back a thousandfold or some nonsense. They don't read verses 1 out of verse 5 when they come to this, do they? You church building Christians, do they? But this I say, he, that reap, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And see, you'll hear this in the church buildings, won't you? But see, they won't read verse 5, which deals with, and not as of covetousness. you hear it in a church building. Number one, they're hitting you up with tithing, which is not for today. Okay? It is not. All right? And they base it off of your covetousness. Through wantonness, make merchandise out of you. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart. And that's big. That's big. Uh, because, and we're going we're gonna to look at the verses that talk about this. Um, God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Like as under the law. Okay? Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And what do they do? And we're gonna we're gonna read this. They go to Malachi, Malachi, and they use that in a different dispensation, where the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. Eternal security was not there. And they had a temple. But see, the Christians in the building, they read 6 and 7. But they don't read from verses 1 on to verse 5, do they? Do they? Because that deals with the actual reasons why. And see, the Christians in the buildings... And here on YouTube, too, they do it out of covetousness. Kent Helvin, I rest my case. Okay. And God is, and see, they'll also read this, too. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. And multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, and that's not want like, gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give it's like, hey, okay, give me a burger or something like that. Okay? Necessity. Necessity. Okay? But is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. While by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distri distribution unto them and unto all men and by their prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you.
thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Okay? So, this thing about giving to those who do the work of the Lord, the necessity of the saints, we just proved it. It's scriptural. It's when you got these guys who take advantage of it, everything they do, please give, please give, please give. Okay, I got a house in Bermuda Triangle that I got to provide for. I got this, that, and the other thing. I got all this. That's the problem. And you know, you read about Paul who had no certain dwelling place. Okay? They hunger and thirst. Okay? And see, where, where was that? About the work. The work. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on verse 10. For by... Grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, referencing the works of the law, lest any man should boast. And today, hey, hey, yeah. See, I, I gave to the uh, gave a lot of money, so I belong to the society of our Lady of Guadalupe or something. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Good works. Providing to, for the necessity of saints, preaching the gospel, passing out, whatever it is. Okay? All right? But see, in the church buildings, which stem from Rome... What do these guys do? They only read you a portion of Corinthians and tug at your covetous strings. Go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Question, Christian. Did Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Hmm? It was his blood shed on the cross, yet he hadn't even, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He hadn't even come yet. What does that mean? This is under the dispensation of the law. The law, where they had a physical temple. Eternal security, once saved, always saved, was not there. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Lord is that Spirit, could come and go. No one was eternally secure under the law. Okay? Okay? They were offering annual sacrifices to cover sin, where the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth of all sin. Okay? This is what is called rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? And when you go... To your Roman Catholic, I don't care if you're a Methodist, a Baptist, a German Catholic, whatever you are. You're going to a phallus house. You're going to a building, like in the, in the community section, where it's like, how, where are you going? Directions inside. Okay? Under the dispensation of the law, there were buildings that you went to. Why? Because the Lord, the Holy Ghost, was not yet given as a permanent resident in the saved believer. It's a different dispensation. And you go into your phallus house, your Roman Catholic phallus house. They read this. It's for another dispensation. It's not applicable today. So, a heresy is being implemented in your little church building there, Christian, when they come here. Verse 7 on to verse 12. In Malachi, chapter 3, or is it 2, that we were supposed to be? Oh, no, it's 3. Even from the days of your fathers, 
fathers. Hmm. Who is this written for? Well, the book of Malachi addresses the Levitical priesthood. It's written for the Hebraic Jews under the law. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherein shall we return? Now remember, the Levitical priests had no inheritance. God was their inheritance. And the tithes and offerings given of the children of Israel were to go to the, Levi the Levitical priests and the sons of Aaron. Will a man rob God? How many of you Christians have heard this in your church building? I'm trying to guilt trip you. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Uh, I even heard that uh, a couple times that I heard, listened to Sam Spit, that whack job guy, um, even quote this himself. When you give your 10%, that's, man, that's you know mandatory. It's when you go beyond that, that's when you're really giving. What a stinking heretic. And that man defends the authorized version. Sam Gipp. Okay? You're cursed with the curse. Oh, let's read verse 8 again. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Oh, and how many? And see, this is the covetousness that, not, this is for a different dispensation. Okay? Not applicable for today. Okay? You hear this? They come here to read this to you where they're offering the plate around to tug at your covetousness. This is under a different dispensation, under the law. The death, burial, and resurrection hasn't happened yet. They had a physical temple. Christian, you're going to your fellow's house and you hear them say this. They're lying to you. This is truth for a different dispensation. This is not applicable for today. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Because the Levitical priesthoods and the son of, sons of Aaron. Okay? And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And see, it's, this is used today in this dispensation to tug at your covetous heartstrings. Oh, you mean the more if I give a thousand dollars, God's gonna open up the windows and give me five thousand bucks? Hey, if you're in a self theist, okay, and you want to attack Christianity on this, go right ahead, please. Go right ahead. Because Christianity is not the same uh, say, uh, faith that was once delivered unto the saints. We proved through Scripture that there is a, that, you know, uh, for the necessity of saints, yes. But what they do in the buildings, ah. Uh -huh. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruit of, fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. All nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. How many of you, hey, you Baptist dudes, who don't rightly divide the word of truth, and even, even Rachman, who knew better, who knew better. I remember, it's like, uh, you know, stingy tight wine. Why, wow, you mentioned tithing. And Ruckman knew better. Ruckman wrote that book about, uh, you know, when you put up a building, you are anti-New Testament. He even said that himself. Okay? He knew better. But yet he hit up on tithing. Ruckman did that. 
He knew better. Okay? And, you know, I'm not, you know, necessarily saying that it's wrong. It's like, hey, can you help me out? And it's like, okay, if somebody was to do that. But when you're doing it all the time, everything you do has a please give, please give, that, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay? That's a problem. If you ask the Father, are you living a little outside your means? Now see, in the book of Acts, chapter 7, question, Christian, in the book of Acts, did Christ die, bury, bury and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and his blood shed on the cross? Yes! Hey, Christian, Christian, come in. When did the New Testament begin? Huh? Come on, tell me. Is it birth? No. Read Hebrews chapter 9 today. Okay? Okay? We'll leave it at that. So see something change. The dispensation change. Okay? Okay? So now when you go to Acts chapter 7, okay? Acts chapter 7, verses 48 out of verse 50. Okay? How be it? This dispensation by grace through our faith, okay? Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? And what is the place of my rest? Verse 50. Hath not my hands made all these things? What is he quoting? He is quoting Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Verses 1 on to verse 2. Isaiah 66, verses 1 on to verse 2. Thus saith the Lord. And see, you got to remember, the thing about the tithing under the Old Testament, okay, but does God need the, the blood, the, the, you know, offering? I mean, does he eat that? No. Okay, the blood offerings were to cover for sin until the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross. The perfect, sinless blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Alright? But, the offerings, the tithes, and the meats, and stuff like that, were for the Levitical priesthood, for the sons of Aaron, because they had no, like, inheritance. God was their inheritance. Okay? Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build me, build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Even Solomon in his dedication to the temple is like, and will you dwell in temples made with hands? Just that was Bradized, okay? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all the all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. And trembleth at my word. Ooh, boy. Trembleth at my word. Poor and contrite. Poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor. Okay. See, you're thinking like this. Sure, that can be encompassed. But it's deeper than that. Okay. And also... Luke 17, Luke 17, verses 20 on to verse 20. Oh, uh, wait, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Acts 17. I skipped one. Excuse me. Acts 17. Acts 17, 24 on to 29. Acts 17, verses 24 on to 29. Paul, this dispensation. Okay? Uh, buildings are not sanctified for us today in this dispensation. Okay. Acts 17, 24 to 29. 
God that made the world and all things therein, seeing he is the Lord of all of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. And that sign, look in the community section. Okay, the YouTube won't let me put it as a thumbnail, or else I would have. But, the, you know, that Methodist phallus house down the way, okay, um, it's like, where are you going? Directions inside. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. Okay? Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. You're alive today because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? The Lord doesn't need us. We need the Lord. He has chosen the foolishness of preaching. Foolish to who? Foolish unto the world. Not to the saints. Okay? We need God. He don't need us. David Wilkerson once said, that's when I immediately... It's like, God needs a... What? Excuse you. Thank you very little. Yeah, your what hurts? Excuse me. Uh, God needs us. Brethren, people, you ever hear a Christian tell you that God needs you? Run away from them. That I mean, how satanic, how obvious could you get? God needs you. <laughs> and hath made of one blood we are all descent from Adam and Eve your belief on that is irrelevant and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation separation you over there, you over there, you over there. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. That's a God of distinction. But what does Rome do? Let us build a tower. Let's all get together and build a tower that reaches on the heaven and make a name for ourselves. Babel or Babel. Okay? That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him. And find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, your life because the Lord has allowed it, and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Look, you selfiest nitwits, um, God created you. Your belief on that, you believe that you came out of the, the water as a sniveling piece of snot. Okay? All right? That, that's ludicrous. All right? God created man. Hence, okay, mankind is the creation of God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Okay? Doesn't mean that you're all saved. Give me a break. Everybody could be saved, right? There, there are Christians out there that, you know, believe that. Okay? Everybody going to be saved. Yeah, right. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, okay, meaning God created you. That doesn't mean that you're all saved. <laughs> no. Link for that will be in the description box. God created you. It does not matter your belief on that at all. That's irrelevant. God created you. Okay? Hey, hey, Mr. Murphy, God created you. Hey, stupid head, God created you. Hey, Miss Thorne or Throne, whatever your name is, God created you. Hey, Mr. Ra, God created you. You didn't create yourself. Okay? We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And wouldn't you notice the, the beautiful artwork, and it is beautiful, of the Roman Catholic Church?
I know I said, but we're gonna gonna read Hebrews chapter nine. Hebrews chapter nine. Okay. Hebrews chapter nine. Again, another kick against church buildings. Verses one on verse ten. Oh, and uh, uh, this is where you read when the New Testament began. We ain't going to read that. I want you to look that up on your own. Verses 1 out of verse 10 in Hebrews chapter 9. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shewbread which is called the sanctuary. And after that, the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, where the priest would go in on Yom Kippur. Okay? The veil of the temple that was rent in twain from top to bottom. Okay? When he said it was finished and there was a great earthquake, the temple and the, uh, the, uh, the veil in the temple was rent in twain, two from top to bottom, meaning that it was finished, uh, that was done, the church thing, or the church thing, the temple thing, it was, you know, we don't do it today, okay? Which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had the manna, that had manna, excuse me, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. That's what was in the Ark. And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God, the women of the priests. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, and it was on Yom Kippur. Not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. We, there's one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I were made in the image of God. Even you self-theists. Even, even little stupid head Christy Burke is made in the image of God. Okay? She has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was standing. Now you, 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 you know, progressive people, you educated people, it's like, I can't understand the authorized version. That, that's pretty difficult to understand, isn't it? Let's look at that again. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Because it was a different dispensation. The death, burial, and resurrection had yet to happen and there's bloodshed on the cross. Different dispensation. Which was a figure for the time then present. Again, that's pretty difficult to understand, isn't it? While rightly dividing the word of truth. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did this service perfect. As pertaining to the conscience. Which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. And that is not a reference onto the Protestant Reformation. God forbid. Reformation. The law, be, what is that? That's Hebrews chapter 7. Uh, uh, where is that? Uh, where it says, uh, therefore there was a change in the law uh, uh, one second, one second. Hebrews 7, 
verses 11 on to verse 12. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there was made a necessity of necessity a change also of the law. Luke 17, 20 on to 21. Luke 17, 20 on to verse 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, spiritual, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. This is not a reference unto the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. This is the spiritual. Neither shall they say low here or low there. When Christ is on the throne, that's the kingdom of heaven, people. Come on. Come on. It's like that's, yeah, that's the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Jesus is on the throne in Jerusalem. Okay. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Clearly. Clearly. This is a reference unto what? Clearly. I mean, look, look at that. How could that be a reference <laughs> Uh, to the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. It's not. It's literal. It's a thing unto the spiritual. Okay? Okay, you with me? You with me? Okay. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capitalist spirit of God dwelleth in you. Dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, that includes us, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hand. Today in this dispensation, the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost. God dwells in you. Not in buildings! And uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, verses 13 and 14. Got to read this. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy capitalist spirit of promise. Holy place. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Just one verse. Verse 17, now the Lord is that capitalist spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ, being caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Alright? Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. See, another thing that these church buildings do, they don't want to scare you. you. Don't offend the classes. You know, don't offend the masses or the whatever that saying is. Why? Because they're all about the money. They're all fleshly. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 1 and verse 8. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication is that as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. <laughs> Wasn't his mother, I believe, it was, if it was his mother, ew, uh, it would have said so. That's gross, regardless. 
And what happens with these church buildings, right? It's like, this is when you need us. We're not judging you. You know, you're mm, having relations with your father's right. That's when you need to come to the church building. That's when you need. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from you. This is when you need to come to the church. We're, we're not judging you. You're a sodomite. We're not judging you. Love is love. God loves you unconditionally. He's not angry at you. You're in grotesque sin that can uh, infect everybody. No, that's when you need, right? <laughs> that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have... <gasps> Judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. Yeah, did you see this all the time? Especially with the, the guys here on YouTube, especially with the stream, streamers. We're not judging you, but, but you know who they judge? Saints, who rightly divide the word of truth. Who say, hey, it's not just believe and receive. Free grace is not in scripture. It costs you your self-righteousness. Okay? It's not by grace through faith in the beginning to the end. That's who these people who don't judge people, that's who they judge. And you know that. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? Gather together, not in a building. Wherever it's not about the building. Church is the people. Brother Alexander B. Hartley has the church videos that the Lord led him to do. Okay, that will be in the description box. Okay, check those out. Okay, great work that the Lord had him to do. Okay, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Now look, I, I, I know that when someone, I mean, hey, you know, when someone is going through something hard or horrific, you, you want, as saints, we want to comfort. But you know, if something is that bad, you know, pray for them. But it's like, look, look, brother, you're, you're in some pretty messed up stuff. Okay, I love you. I'm praying for you, but as you, you, you doing this stuff, dude, get away from me. I, I can't be around you. I have to consider myself. Okay, I do. I do. Okay? I do. Uh, you know, you got to consider others. Okay? I love you. I'm praying for you. But, you know, as long as you're messed up in this, go, go, go. Get out. Get out! Get away. But again, I have seen these Christians, especially with the King James Bible believing Christians, have taken this way out of proportion and because you disagree with their leader... They try to implement this. You know, there are those of you who know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Look, look sometime in the comment sections. I'm going to name one name here. Not who you think. Gene Kim. Leave that alone. Okay? Your glorying is not good. How are they glorying? We're not judging you. This is when you need to come amongst the body of Christ. When you got five brethren together, you got some guy coming in who's in blatant sin and, you know, say, like, hey, hey, what, you know, whatever. It's like, get out of here, dude. Praying for you. Love you. But you, you, you get, get out. Get out. 
But see, what were they doing? They were glory. We don't judge you. You can't judge me anyway. Like that cross-dressing Calvinist idiot. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you know, we'll go, go, go. Yeah, shut up. Okay? You come out. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And you can go ahead and read the rest of the chapter. Okay? Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verses 1 on and verse 9. Stand fast there for in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Like Mark the messenger. God keep the commandments. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Yeah, because you're justifying yourself. Like the Calvinists do. Like the Catholics do. Be, be there every time the doors are open. I've given this and that. You know, <laughs> I belong unto the Society of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I had the, I, I had the bail cookie. For we, through the capitalist spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Someone coming around offering you, ye shall be as gods. Justify, hey, don't worry about it. You, you just believe and receive. Don't worry. You, you shouldn't do that, no, but don't worry. It ain't going to hurt you. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Little leaven, leaven the whole lump. Luke 13. Luke 13. Verses 20 under verse 21. Luke 13. 20 under 21. This thing about leaven. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Right? And he said. Luke uh, 13, 20 on to verse 21. And he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leaven. See, leaven is being used in an example in two contexts. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You get some, you know, you get your brethren together and your sisters, brethren and sisters, in like some dude's house, going through the scripture, having fellowship, and then some guy comes in uh, blatantly in sin, it's a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Okay? But also, also, it could be that small stone that's just past an avalanche, that little prick in the heart, okay, that, get, you know, just a little that can explode in someone to get them to go seeking for the truth that is in Christ Jesus through the authorized version of the scriptures. See, it's a two-edged sword. Okay? And scripture is showing us that. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Okay? Matthew chapter 16. Okay? Matthew chapter 16, which I think we should have read first, but that's okay. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 6 on to verse 12. Okay? 
we should have read this first, but that's okay. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Leaven is being used in two contexts. One that is good, which is God, and one that is not. Like we saw in 1 Corinthians, in which we read out of place. We should have read this verse, but okay. And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand? I we are we twelve. Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets he took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand how and how many baskets he took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. A Pharisee tradition scripture. Catholics are tradition. They even say that in their catechism. Uh, their, their tradition. 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 Okay? And, and, and let's look, uh, look, uh, look, look at Luke 12. Okay? Luke 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. Hmm. In the meantime, when they were gathered together in an innumerable number, multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be, re be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. And Mark chapter 8, and we'll be done. Okay. Sorry for reading that out of out of order. Mark chapter 8, verses 13 on to verse 15. And we'll be done. And he left them. And entering into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take ye, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and the leaven of Hera, king. Hmm. That is going to be it for this video. Like I said, this um, this came in the, uh, the mail. Oh, and by the way, let me see this. I, I wouldn't even wipe my bum with this. There we go. There we go. It, it is nonsense. Nonsense. There you go. I got a garbage can right here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's going to be it for this little video, brethren. Thank you for watching this if you do. Um, <laughs> for God's sakes, people. Don't go to a church building. I hope this will clear up some questions that some of you have about this. And um, Lord be glorified. Thank you for watching if you do. We'll see you in the next video.